I've grown up in the church my entire life. And again, I didn't mean to start this way, but hey, here we are. <laughs> I've grown up in the church my entire life, born into the church. My mom left church on a Sunday, went into labor and had me Monday morning. Like that much born into the church, right? And we might have made it to Bible study that Wednesday. I don't know. But we <laughs> we we definitely were at car rehearsal on Saturdays, okay? Uh, born into the church always going to the same church. It's the church that my grandfather is the pastor of. And to make a, le- a long story a little less long, I will say that when you grow up in the church, you get used to the traditions and it's easy to get fatigued and tired of the monotony of waking up, going to church. Wake up Sunday morning, Go to Sunday school. After Sunday school is over, you go to the main service. After the main service is over, you take a little lunch break, go get something to eat, go to the, you know, the buffet, and then you go back to church for the evening service. And then you come back on Tuesday for men's meeting. And you come back on Wednesday for Bible study. And you come back on Thursday for youth meeting. And you come back on Friday for the youth program. And you all there all day Saturday for all the choirs that you're in. And then you're back on Sunday to do the whole thing over again. It's easy to get tired of the monotony of church and feel like you're stagnant, like you're not growing, like you're not in the right environment. And I will say I got there. I got to the point where I was like, look, this isn't the right environment for me. I'm tired of doing things the same old way every Sunday, week in and week out. Here we go again. It's the same old thing with the same old people. And I'm tired of it. Right. So. I went through the process in my mind of finding a new church, something that I had never done before, something that was going to be difficult for me to do. I talked about it with my wife. We were uh, talking about the process of doing it, you know, the right way. I don't feel like you should leave a church because you uh, were upset or offended by somebody, some individual in the church. I do believe that the church is a hospital for the sick. Right. So I wouldn't leave a hospital if I need treatment. I'm not going to leave a hospital because a sick person did something that sick people do. Right. I'm going to stay at the hospital to get the treatment that I need and also hope that person, whoever is sick, get the treatment that they need as well. So um, I wanted to make sure that my heart was correct and that I prayed on it and that I asked God what was the right thing to do. What was the right thing to do as far as leaving the church and doing it the right way. And through my prayer and my consistent conversations with God about this subject, something said, you know what, why don't you start taking inventory of all the things you don't like about the church that you attend? Talk about the monotony. Talk about having the same programs. Talk about how the usher board has 17 anniversaries a year. (laughs) I swear to you, our usher board has like quarterly anniversaries. I think it's I think it's crazy. But anyway, see, look, I I wasn't supposed to make that joke. My headphones came out. Hold on. (laughs) I wasn't even supposed to make that joke, y'all. All All right. I think we got it. We good. There we go. There we go. Now we're back. Good. So um, I started taking inventory. Basically on all the things that I didn't like about the church that I was attending to, my church, my grandfather's church, church that I grew up in. Something interesting happened when I kind of got to my ment- the end of my mental list, right? When, when I started thinking about everything. So I had everything written down. Then on the other side, something said, okay, on this side, you have everything that's wrong. On this side, write down everything you tried to do to fix it. And I said, oh, you got me. You got me. I haven't tried to do anything to be a part of the solution. I've only been sitting back and complaining about the problem. And I remember having that conversation with myself. I remember having that conversation with my wife. And I remembered that I was going to actively start trying to overcome these hurdles for me. And just because these things were an issue for me, I'm not saying it was an issue for everyone, but I said, you know what? I'm going to start trying to overcome these hurdles for myself. And so 
what I found out was super interesting. One thing I found out through this process was that some of the things that were on that list, I wasn't really willing to do anything about. Like, yeah, that could be better, but I don't really care enough to take action on it. So if I don't care enough to take action on it to fix it, I can't care enough to complain. Right? If I don't care enough to take action on a problem to fix it, then I can't care enough to complain. I learned that lesson in that moment. I also learned that there are some other things that when I thought about fixing them, when I thought about being a part of it, I got really excited about it. One of the things was um, on the list and I saw it. I'm like, man, I would love if I could do that for my church. Here's the funny thing. Once I identify those things, those things that I could do, those things that I could help with, Not only did I start looking for ways to do those things, but opportunities start coming to me to do those things. So one of the things that I did today was our church had uh, Cupcake Wars. It's the second annual Cupcake Wars. And what's so dope about it is through this process, this is something that my wife decided she wanted to do at the church. Not something that had been done before. A very original idea, something to get the men and the young men of the church and the women and the young women of the church in the kitchen cooking cupcakes together and make it competitive and have a trophy and make it an event worthy of coming to. And last year was the first annual Cupcake Wars where we, you know, this team, you make your three cupcakes, women, and the men make their three cupcakes. And we have judges come in, outside judges that don't belong to our church come in and taste the, the, the cupcakes, look at the displays, the presentation, the creativity, the text, the, the taste of everything, and give a score. We announce it at the church, and it's so much fun. And even though I'm tired, <laughs> and even though I'm just now starting the podcast, and it is uh, 11 p.m. EST, which means I have approximately eight or nine hours before this podcast should be over upload it and available for you to listen i'm just now getting started i'm tired i just spent the last three hours or so maybe four editing the video from cupcake wars but it does give me a lot of fulfillment because when i looked at what i wanted our church to be a part of it was this a part of it was having these types of events capturing them in video sharing those videos across youtube and facebook and other places of the internet So people can see, you know, this is a place, yes, that you're going to come and get the word of God, because that's first and foremost, but also a place where you can come and have fun. Also a place where you can bring your children and your children are accepted and there's not an extra space or another building where we put your children in where you don't know where they are, right? Not knocking anybody who does that, but that's not, you know, this church feels like home. I like going to a church that... If I'm, if I'm missing, someone knows about it. If someone is not at church, it's easy to look around and say, oh, where, where's, where's, where's Cheryl? Took me a long time to think of a name of somebody that doesn't actually go to our church. <laughs> I didn't want to say somebody's name. And they like, hey, man, I, I was working that Sunday. Because, you know, people, people, people feel away when you ask them where they've been. <laughs> I asked somebody, I won't say who about you know coming to church or whatever and it was like shoot just because i don't come to church don't mean i ain't saved i was like whoa i just hadn't seen you making sure you're healthy making sure you're okay but anyway i'll get off of that uh 